Welcome to the first video on our course on PyQt and PySide. In this first video, we're going to go over installing PySide and PyQt, as well as how to check out the documentation and how you're going to be looking at the documentation because this is a huge framework. And yes, you're going to spend a lot of time on the documentation page. Documentation is going to be PySide. So whatever works on PySide usually works on Qt. And sometimes you have to change the modules where you're getting the modules from, but it's basically the same thing. So to install the frameworks, we're going to use PyPy. And um, if you don't have pip, you need to install pip. There's a lot of videos on the internet. So check out some of those videos. I'm not going to show you how to install pip. If you go to, to the website, I'll leave a, a link in the description below. You can install uh, PySite 6 by going to the command line and writing this. Okay, you can even click on here on copy, open the command line and, uh, and, and do that for PyQt, same thing. So if you just want to install one of them, it's fine. You can follow along with just one of them. So documentation, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for the documentation. We're here in Qt, in PySite uh, documentation, Qt for Python. And usually because it's, there's so much stuff, so much stuff in here that, um, and it looks like it's not much, but once you start opening the modules, it's crazy. It's crazy. There's thousands of stuff. <laughs> I think there's thousands of modules. And I know there's hundreds. I don't, I'm not sure, but maybe there's thousands. Usually what you're going to end up doing is uh, writing down a widget or um, something that you're trying to figure out how it works you, and, and, and you do it here. So, for example, for a Q main window, which is one of the first things that we're going to use, we can write down Q main window search and it's usually the first, the first one that pops up. Once you get there, it goes straight to the class. As you can see, PySite 6, uh, the Qt widgets from Qt widgets. That's where you get the Q main window from. Q main window. And it takes a parent. It's got the flags. It's got window flags that you can look at. And they're actually down here. If I'm not, no, this is doc options. But you got the parent, and it tells you what kind of parent it is. It's a Q widget. It's from the Q, Qt Qt widgets so and if you press this guy it's going to take you to the parent and you can see uh, how, what the parent does usually when you press here on the name of the the widget that you're checking it goes up to the top it tells you the inheritance so q widget is inheriting from q object and is also inheriting from cute gui uh, paint device okay and then it tells you all the widgets that inherit from q widget then you get the synopsis and with the, all the functions that you have access to using Q widget in this case. And I will be referring to um, to this site um, quite often so that we can see what it's available to us. As you can see, Q widget is crazy. It's got a lot of stuff because a lot of stuff is uh, inheriting from Q widget. Today is the 29th of November, 21. So right now. I, I like to be updated so everything is up to date at the moment and as you can see here uh, I'm using Windows version 10 Python 3.10 which has just came out a while ago like a few months ago and SpySide and PyQt 6.2.1 so if you want to check if you have the code here just looking at the code you can figure out how you can know what kind of what versions are, are used so at the moment I'm cre creating a framework for music and this has been very helpful to me. So if you want to use that, uh, you're welcome to check out to use this code, obviously. I'm going to be using Sublime Text. I haven't mentioned that before, but I am going to be using Sublime Text. So something that you could install in Sublime Text uh, from package control is PyQt uh, 5 completions. Even though it says PyQt 5, the class names are the same. So this will help you autocomplete some class names. So the way to install it is you go to preferences, package control, and you do add repository and then you paste this link in there. I'm going to show you very quickly how to do that. Control Shift P, add repository. Okay, press enter and it's asking for URL. If we paste that URL here and press enter, it's going to install that repository. And then all we have to do is Control Shift P, install package. 
Well, uh, yeah, I think uh, it doesn't show up for me, obviously, because it's already installed. But if you tr if you type IQT5, it will show up here, and you can install that. And what's that? What that's gonna do is that now every time you try to start doing a Q something, you get a bunch of classes here. So Q main, right? Q main window is uh, the one we're gonna start with. Uh, actually, Q application. Control N for a new file, and I'll save this as let's say my first ui.py from q2 widgets we got q application how do i get there i mean i want a q application if we look at the go back to the um, to the website and we do qt applica q application actually you can right away say see that it's coming from qt widgets pi site qt widgets q application that's how i know that I need to, from PySite 6 Qt widgets, import Q application. So Q application is always going to be needed. So we can say app equals Q application, right? And if we're not importing sys, we can just leave it like that. And at the end, it's going to be app.exec. Previous versions, we used to do this, not anymore. Now it's like that. Okay, so now we have an application. That's go nothing is going to happen if I run this. I'm doing Control B just to run it. Nothing's going to happen. We don't have a window to show. So let's make a window. Let's look at Q main window. Uh, and Q main window is coming from the same place as Q application. And if you do what I just did on the on the documentation, you'll figure that out. So I'm going to say Win as window is going to equal to a Q main window. All right. And I'm going to construct the object. And then just uh, a, a main window has a, cent a central widget. And we're going to see this more in detail once we start using uh, Qt Designer. So I'm going to go set central widget and I can place a widget in there as the main widget for the window that I'm about to to what? to show I'll have to show the window otherwise nothing happens and if I just do this I mean nothing happens it, it, well it throws an error QMain index takes exactly one argument zero was given we have to place actually place a widget in there so you know what let's get a push button one of the most famous widgets Q push button all right and I can just copy that bring it there here and my button is gonna be a Q push button and we can initialize Q push button with text so let's say my button so if I place that in there that's gonna be the, the main widget for our window so now if I do a control B or F7 there we go wonderful how beautiful is that we have a button and we can click that button <laughs> now if we go, if i go to the documentation here and check out q push button what do we have here we probably have a bunch of stuff as you can see q push button can be initialized in two ways i use the second way here and i said text i place text in there and then you have parent and I didn't parent it to anybody. But if I wanted to parent it, it had to be a Q widget. Q main window, I believe it's a child of Q widget, so I could parent it to the, wi uh, to the Q main window. But the thing is, I added it to the central widget of the main window. So it is its parent anyway. And this is what we got. Okay, so uh, what do I do with this? Right, you may say. Well. Q push button is a child of Q abstract button. So when you when you look at uh, when you have a, a widget and you're like, mm, I'm missing stuff here. I would like to do some other stuff. Then you go back one class and see what is this Q abstract button. Let's check that out. Q abstract button. So because it's in inheriting Q abstract button we can do whatever Q abstract button does inside of Q push button. And this has a, a bit more stuff, as we can see here. We can click it, we can see if it's clicked, if it's checked, 
uh, if it's checkable, uh, if it's down, if it's pressed, released, etc, etc, etc. And we can learn more about it in the detailed description down here. Now, if that's still not enough for you and you still want to figure out what else do we have, you can go down another level to QWidget, all right? <clears throat> and now QWidget has a lot more stuff. So whatever QWidget has, we can use it inside the Q abstract button and inside of Q because they are inheriting from each other. I just want to, this is huge, right? Action event, close event. Okay, the virtual functions is when you, we'll go over that in later videos when you try to create a, um, a class that inherits from that. And then we have Q object. We can go all the way down to Q object. And Q object is the one that is responsible for signals. And that's what I'm about to show you because that's probably what you want to do with the button. You want to make this button do something, okay? So if we say button clicked, no thank you, connect, so I'm going to define a function here, and I called button, right? And I'm going to take an argument. Uh, why not? That's my argument. And I'm going to print. Actually, I'm going to print my argument, see what it, what it comes from it, all right? And now if I place this function in there, it's going to connect to that function. When I press the button, when I click, it's going to connect to call button. It's going to call button, and if it throws any arguments, this is going to catch the argument, and it's going to print the argument. It prints false. What does that mean? Well, if we look at the documentation, we're going to figure out it's printing if it's checked or not, because we can make a button checkable. So if the, the button was checked, and I pressed it, it would return true. So this is usually how you do uh, signals and connections well callbacks let's call that okay so I'm gonna wrap this video right here because we gone over 10 minutes now I think and I'm gonna wrap it by showing you how easy it is to go from pi side to pi cute there we go this doesn't always works of course because uh, some modules are not in the same place as the other and we're going to see that in some uh, future videos but for now we're going to close up with this and we're going to continue and make this uh give this more features or whatever i'll see you in the next video